this is the Motorola 5500, 5550, the actual name of it. PMUE 5151. So this particular radio has a broken power connector. Remove the face plate. This plate comes off. Side. You have to pry this up. The screwdriver. Sorry for Dick Nugget making all this noise. Face plate is off, cover is off. Then we need a security bit, T10. T10 size. Now we gotta get to this broken connector. If you notice, they're all numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, all the screws are out, and the noisemaker around here is gone. I apologize for that, but you just get a little pick, go up under one portion of it, and lift up this RF shield. I usually invert it. Put all the screws in there. closer.
here are the power connectors right here. So we gotta get through that. Get the power connector out. I'm just gonna hardwire some wires in there. Because I don't have a replacement connector. Be back in a second. Next step is to remove these antennas. I already loosened the nuts. Now it's gonna come out with the lock washer. Set those aside. Same thing with this SMB connector. Take them out, set them to the side. You need a T8 bit. These two. Next, this rubber piece has to come out. So out to the side. There's one more. moving but we're not there yet so hang on next you want to carefully note the orientation of the ribbon cable gently Set the face plate up inside. So inside the face plate we have where the ribbon cable goes. We gotta remove this and that. And then we'll be able to lift that circuit card out. So that second one in there, we gotta remove that too. comes out from this connector right here and it goes in the bottom one okay next we're gonna need the t6 tool very small very small star bit. And that is going to remove these. So I got my three T6 star bits. Those off to the side. We got this ribbon cable that comes out from this face plate. Now the blue side is facing up on the inside there. I don't know if you can see that. Gently remove that from the face plate. And you have an RF connector here that goes under here for the RF amp concerned about that right now because we're just removing this main circuit card. So 
So let's take some fan dangling. You gotta lift it up and out. And go up and that way. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off so I don't break it. That just pops out. So these are all our components. Got the top cover. Got the face plate. Got the RF shield. With all the little pieces. So, be back in a second. Next thing we got to do is remove this detent, this boot. So you just get up under there gently with a screwdriver and gently pry it. Doesn't take much effort, and that gently lifts out. And you'll see the the weather boot, the weather grommet. Set that off to the side. Starting to give. So it's got to come up and out to release it from here. And that's going to be a challenge, but it can be done because I've done it before. So hang on a second. Yes, it was giving me a problem because this metal clip here has to come out. You just get under there easy. With a screwdriver. Pops it goes. Now it'll come out easy. That's what we were waiting for. So I'm going to lift it up. Where were we? All right. I just go under the face plate gently with a screwdriver and lift it up. And then you just work it back and forth. Slowly pull it out. Here's the radio circuit board. Here's the connector we need to replace. Okay, just make sure that you don't touch this heat sink compound. So that's got to go back on here. So if you touch it, it's going to get all over everything. So be careful. And handle the card by the edge. Use ESD if you have it. Wrist strap or something. But anyway, I'm going to desolder this. There's a plastic clip right here as the guide. 
and then there's one lead and the second lead. And I'm just going to hardwire a cable in there. I'm going to see how much Motorola wants for this uh, replacement part. So once again, we're going to desolder these two points right here. This point and this point. And that will allow this connector to come out and then we'll replace it. I'm just going to hardwire a cable directly on there and put a strain relief so it can't be pulled out again because these are used in pretty rugged areas so these connectors break off all the time. Okay, I got my bench set up. The soldering iron's hot. Well. Now, before I remove this connector, I'm just going to verify which side is hot and which side is not. So now I see that the broken side, the side with the brass dot here, is positive. Okay. The power wire off to the side. Looks on the connector. Use soldering wick. So I use this stuff to pull a little bit out. Get some flux between your thumb and forefinger. And you work it into the braids. Put the wick between your work and the soldering iron, and it should remove the solder.
probably starting to move. So, sometimes you gotta put this little bit of pressure on there. Being careful not to touch anything else with that hot iron because you could accidentally desolder some surface mount components that you don't want to do that. Now what we're going to do is we get most of the solder gone. Going to heat up one side of the component lead. See if I can move it until it heat it up until it moves. Keep moving it. Try and seesaw this thing out. Then they're pretty good. logic kicked in since we're not trying to save the connector we're just trying to remove it the easy button is to just clip these leads There, so that worked. I still gotta get those things out. I was just heating it up till all that solder melts. Sometimes you need a little bit of extra solder just to get it going. There you go. That came right out. Now, on the bottom side. Put some flux in there. I'm gonna clean out these holes. Now it's ready for the wires. Remember that's positive. The one with the, uh, the brass dot. Okay, so I got cut the old connector off. You can see where the pin was broken off inside. That's gone. Now, got my two wires I'm going to feed through the port and then 
I'm going to strip the wire. I'm going to have to retwist tightly, as tight as I can, retwist these wires so it will fit in that hole. So when I retwist the wires, I usually get some flux on my fingers. So it'll get flux into the strands of the wire, so when I tin it, when I solder it, it'll make it that much easier. I can get it with my fingers. Well, that's what I had to do was uh, the noisemakers are back, by the way. So I had to remove some of the strands to make it fit into the holes. So now it will fit into the holes like they're supposed to. Like that. So right here. So it'll fit into the hole now, so I'm going to go ahead and get it prepared. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm putting flux onto the connectors. I'm going to solder it in place. second this is something that is expensive it's about thirty dollars a can but it works really good
Now we're going to make a strain relief. So these two wires here don't short out between each other. So basically is how that's done is if you use the Hardman double bubble epoxy. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. You just tear off the lid of the packet. Mix it together. It's got about three to five minute pot time. All this is, it's just to insulate the electrical connection. And I'll just let it sit and cure. So catch you in a minute. <clears throat> Alright, so we got the epoxy it cured. So the leftover epoxy I just use set it out. It cured. So it's ready. I took a zip tie, a big one, a large one. And I put the zip tie right here. For strain relief, and now I put the hang on a second. All right, so now we have the, the board in, and next thing we're going to do is put all the screws in so we can uh, secure it down. Be back in a second. Okay, now I'm going to reinstall these screws. Sorry about that. I'm going to put the other two in and save some time. Okay. So that's in. Now I'm going to put this rubber piece back in. This is how it goes. The leather strip. Okay. Make these all nice. This connector goes back on here. Nice and easy. Next is this connector. put this one on so I'll be back in a second okay so we're back now I gotta put this clip back down there 
just because it came off of it. I'm going to put it back in. That's the only reason. Next, we got to put this faceplate back together. So, this is going to be fun. Delicately. So, that goes in there easy. back in a second okay the face plate is getting ready to be put back on we have ribbon cables assembled this this piece back on rubber detent the snap down clip okay now I'm gonna put the RF shield back on screws that go with it so I'll be back in a second okay all the screws are back on now got to put on the, uh, the top cover which is simply just uh, fitting it over the, the mounting brackets on both sides in place. Uh, I'm going to put the face plate on. And that should go pretty quick. Hang on a second. Okay, so we reinstalled the ribbon cable. Got the weather shield on there. Just make sure that it's not pinched when you snap it together. And it snaps right back on together. And the radio is back together. So, next thing we have to do is do a little strain relief here and a little bit of epoxy to keep it from moving around. And it should be a okay. We'll check it out in a second. Okay, so the uh, zip ties installed next to another piece of epoxy. Okay, so we got the epoxy in there, just waiting for it to cure. Once it's cured, gonna power it up and see what happens. Okay, so the epoxy's cured enough. I got it connected to a product is called a Sun Force. It just allows me to use a adapter. A cigarette lighter adapter. Plug it into the radio. Push and hold the power button. See what happens. There we go. We got power. So you change out a hard wire cable into the broken power socket of a Motorola radio. So, thank you for watching.